There's some basic equipment needed for clicker training. The first, probably the most obvious, are clickers. And there's different kinds of clickers. There's softer clickers, such as this eye clicker, and there's louder clickers. Um, that are better for use out of doors when you need more sound and more volume. Of course, you can always use your voice uh, or sounds your mouth can make. So mouth clucks or yes or x or any other sound that's short and consistent in sound. You can also use any kind of big pen that has a click on it is a softer click, especially if you have dogs that might be sensitive or you have to work right close to their ears. Other equipment that is incredibly handy is a treat pouch. This particular one uh, is great because it has a nice wide open mouth. It fastens around your waist, has extra pouches for things like poop bags, um, and also other little avenues where you can tuck things in and, and store them. They're washable. They're useful, they last for quite a long time. For many years I used a smaller one, which served me well, although I do prefer the bigger one because I can stick my hand in, not have to worry about where it is. It just goes in, grabs a treat, now to come. This one you had to be a bit more thoughtful about where you put your hand. It fits on your belt. Um, and the problem I found with some of these is that the Velcro gives out fairly shortly. Uh, but a great little thing, lasted me five years, so it, it is a good little product as well. One additional piece of equipment that's really useful is a jacket or a vest that has nice big pockets in it so you can use those at a later date to store your treats in. And you have quick access, there's no visual cue uh, in the form of a treat pouch that you're going to be training. You can just have it on you, you're walking around the house, your dog does whatever behavior that you want, whether you want to capture, whether you've cued it, and lo and behold, there's your treat available. So they never know when you're going to ask. So it adds a little bit of the unpredictability. Um, and it's also nice and warm, of course, as well. Treats need to be small, about the size of a small pea, or the size of your baby fingernail. Uh, and that would be for a 30 to 40 pound dog. Uh, maybe half that for a smaller dog. And doesn't have to be too much larger for a larger dog. The other element that's important is that they're soft and chewy so that the dog can quickly ingest them and swallow. If they're crumbly, little bits fall all over the place and that slows the dog down and if they're too hard and they're not as flavorful they may not be motivating enough for the dog. So a couple of the common things that I use is real meat. So bits of chicken, beef, turkey, pork, whatever you can get. Again same size, actual meat. Highly motivating for your dog. The square I showed you earlier is cheese, high in fat, or depending on how food motivated your dog is, Lucy really will work hard, believe it or not, for a simple Cheerio. And oats are one of the better of the grains if you want to feed your dog grain at all. And you can also flavor them by just simply mixing in some real meat, let them absorb some of the smell and the flavor, and that for your dog will increase it. And that's actually what I do for Jessie because a Cheerio for her isn't motivating enough. So we mix that up and it tastes a little bit yummier and so she's more motivated to work for it. And yes, you can use kibble if that's what your dog eats and if it has high enough value for the environment you're training in. Many people use kibble while training at home but use real meat and cheese in more distracting environments. Money saving tip. Real meat costs about two to three dollars a pound whereas some of the commercial treats can be up to twenty dollars a pound. Cheaper commercial treats may have a lot of extra food additives as well. Another great tool that you do need for improving your skills if you want to be technically correct is some kind of timer so that it allows you to time a certain period of time and you get to count how many clicks and treats that you can deliver in that period of time. Because in a lot of cases, the frequency or rate of reinforcement can be critical to your dog's success in specific situations. A really good way of practicing your actual timing of the behaviors that you want to capture with the click is to get a tennis ball and have a friend bounce it and practice clicking the instant that it hits the floor or conversely at the top of its arc. Try and click and capture that. So it's just a really good way of practicing the actual use of the clicker. So those are some basic tools with clicker training.
As you see, they don't cost much and they're just great little tools that you can pack away in pockets and in the treat pouch and take them wherever you go.